Today, we're answering the question, how did I go from being in the board game hobby to creating board game media? And to answer this question, I've got some special guest stars. Let's do this. All right, so in this episode of Behind the Scenes, I'm gonna be telling you the 10 things I hate most about this whole Board Game Co. Quackalope marriage or whatever the hell is going on there. So what are those 10 things exactly? The 10, 10 things we hate about Sagrada. That's what we're what are you talking, talking about? about today. Did you? Did you? <laughs> Okay, so the awkward. question of the day is, now this question was, that's, that's, that was the plan. It was 10 questions, but you know what? We're just gonna, that's what I meant to say, but we're just gonna go, okay, start from scratch. Uh, we have a question. A question was brought in um, uh, or presented to us uh, from, for our behind the scenes series. And that was as a board game media design like what got you from just being a hobby board game player to creating content for board game like creating board game media so i thought hey what a perfect day to ask this question since i have these two lovely gentlemen with their great games and great podcast podcast videos youtube the channels all, all the all the things they do all the stuff and the and, and Jesse, you're great too if you're watching. Um, anyways, so we're going to talk about how we go, went from just uh, board game, board games, just people who enjoy board games, enjoy playing it, to now people who slave over and don't sleep anymore, <laughs> creating content for it. Sure. On, like, on a trip to Toronto, I had to prep like five days worth of videos before I go just to make sure I'm covered. So yeah, right. I know what you mean. I know mm -hmm. what you mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's, let's, let's start with you. Let's go. So let's for me, start. yeah, for me, this is going to be a probably a different journey than the two of you almost inherently because I have like a roundabout stop that got me here, mm -hmm. which is I, I've been board gaming since 2012, I want to say. And I've loved board gaming since 2012, since I first found it. I had, like, you know, obviously my pre-exposure to Carcassonne, Catan, whatever. And 2012 is when I was like, oh, there's a lot of these. And I haven't looked back since. But what I did do along the way, my pit stop to content creation is that I started a, a board game store. I started a board game right. business, Board Game Co., that I bought, bought and sold used games. Started my basement, moved to an actual warehouse once my basement couldn't fit 1,500 games anymore. And did that for years. And I actually started content creation, the original intent, not the intent now, but the original intent was, I, I was like, oh, hey, let me get more marketing, social media, different things. So I started an Instagram account, didn't really go anywhere because I wasn't into it. I was just like, I was doing it because like, okay, I'll take a photo, no problem, whatever. Hashtag nine different thingies, whatever, move on. I wasn't into it. But then I started doing YouTube and I, I like talking about things that I like. Sure. And I like doing that a lot. And so it started as like, if you watch my earliest videos on the channel, the first like 15 I do things at the end, like, oh yeah, this video is sponsored by Board Game Co. We buy and sell used games, blah, 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 blah. I stopped that very quickly because that wasn't what I liked doing. Right. I just liked talking about board games. I just liked telling you why I was back into Kickstarter or not, or which were my 10 favorite games for that thing. I just liked talking about board games. But yeah, for me, it's a very interesting, different path than most people because I didn't go from, I like board games, let me talk about board games. I went from, I like board games, I'm going to start a business around board games, let me try to promote that business. Forget that. I just like board games. Just back to square one again. That was my journey. All right. So, so you're telling me, so you like board games. You went on this journey and you said you like talking about board games. Oh, so that's yes. why you made the YouTube channel. Now, is it because there's like nobody in your house that will listen to you talk about <laughs> board games? So you thought you'd have to share it with that, force it upon us? Yeah. There's my is daughter who <laughs> doesn't like, no. So, so, so <laughs> basically I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I guess so. So to a certain extent, one thing that I always thought about is I it may not seem like it from my channel, but I actually hate public speaking. I despise mm -hmm. it. And then I kind of, when I started the channel, I kind of realized it's not that I hate public speaking. It's that I hate speaking to a large audience about things that I don't care about. Mm, right. But if you pick something I'm passionate about, sure. whatever that is, it might even be our opinion on the latest Marvel movies. Like I will have a discussion from today until tomorrow about something I find interesting. I just don't do it if it's not, if it's something you wrote, if it's whatever. I, but if it finds something that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. that's the whole way I approach my channel. I don't think about it as anything other than talking to a friend who is a captive audience and isn't interrupting me. Thank you, by the way, for never interrupting me through my videos. But it, I don't know. I just, yeah, I mean, my wife 
does, I do talk to my wife a lot of board games. My kids, I play board games with. My friends, I play board games with. It's mostly the, the audience that I talk to about board games. All right. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Daryl, this is a different, because you're, you're not a media uh, content creator. No. You're a game creator. So sure. when, when, did, when did you get to the point where you're like, you're playing these games, and you're like, wow, these are all shit. I need to make the good ones. <laughs> no, so. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that. I mean, the funny part was I was resistant. Mm. Um, my story kind of revolves significantly around, uh, there's a group in Canada called the Game Artisans of Canada. Mm. And there are a bunch of designers, including Sen Fung Lim, who lives mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in London, Ontario. And uh, I was getting more and more into games and started to meet some designers, some local designers. And I started playtesting and just kind of seeing, you know, how the sausage was made. And and Sen and other people, part of this uh, group called GAC, uh, they kept uh, asking, like, why don't you design something? And for me, I just enjoyed playing games. I didn't want to, you know, mess up my hobby. I didn't want to mm -hmm. stop liking it. You know, I was, like, worried like, oh, if this was, like, my job or something, like, would, would that yeah. take away mm -hmm. from the experience? And then slowly I started to wonder and think about, well, what if I, you know, even dabbled a little bit with design or tried it out? And uh, and the real moment, and um, it's funny, I don't know who this person is anymore, but one day a person came over to Sen's house with a with a prototype and and, or they said it was a prototype, and they wanted to show us the game, and they slapped this huge binder of just spreadsheets, just like hundreds of pages of spreadsheets of their idea of a game. And I remember sitting and being like, what's the game? Or like, what do you do? And they left and I, I had the epiphany of like, well, if that person can call themselves a game designer, maybe then I could give it a try. And started just making some games and seeing, could I make something that was fun? And so what was your first one? So my first game that actually I designed um, and got published was called The Walled City. I co-designed it with Steven Excellent Sauer. Game, by the way. Oh, thanks. And uh, yeah, that that kind of like opened the door to other games that we started to try, you know, new ideas or things that we liked in certain games or things that we didn't like that, you know, gave us a challenge to try to see how would, would we solve it. And, and I just think like over time, like I continue to just love games. I'm a gamer first. And then I also get to work in the industry and make games as well. So it hasn't impacted your love for board games? No, I think if anything, it, it makes me even appreciate them more. Like I even think, you know, we we filmed a thing about which games you should yeah. get rid of and whatnot. And uh, um, the funny thing for me is now, even games that I don't like, there's just something in them that I know there's something to discover or something mm -hmm. to try out. And it's a different person's perspective. And I think that over time, that makes me even appreciate games more and more for like something to learn from or something to... Like have a moment, so mm -hmm. so yeah. I love things more and more every and day. An interesting side tangent that's relevant to myself is, I used to say things like off the bat, like "Oh, I hate that game." I'll right, play that right. Game again, yeah. And then as a content creator, I realized I, I I have a certain responsibility to not just reflect my own opinion, but mm -hmm. why my opinion. Is right. So I start trying to be more critical both directions. Sure. I might find a game that I love that I just previously said I love this game, yep. and now I'm looking for things to be critical about that thing. Sure. And the reverse is true as well. A game that I previously hated, and well, hate it again, because if I didn't want to play it again, I would look for, okay, great, I know why I don't want to play it, but what's the good parts about it? Mm -hmm. I do find that it's forced me to be more interested in, in the nuances as opposed to the pure feelings. Yeah. And over time, like, I think it changes, like, tastes or, like, food, like, you, you appreciate... The work that's in it, but also like you are maybe not in the mood or your group drives better with a certain type of game or things like that. So I think that's also just part of the fun of the hobby is there's so many games now out there and there's so many different people making great content and making great games. And so you can connect on a few different levels. Well, I think what's one of the things you mentioned that about it, like impacting my how I like board games it's it's changed how I interact with board games, mm. as you mentioned. Like you kind yeah. of you're more analytical, but sure. also I used to play games into the ground, right. like uh, like Pandemic, uh, uh, Marvel Legendary. Sure. Like I, those boxes are worn, right? Right. Those like those that game is worn because the board from all the folding and unfolding, sure. putting sure. it away. And I, I used to just play them to like five six in the morning because yeah. I I wanted to like hey come over play this yeah. and I used to play it over and over and over again. But now it's like I'm lucky if I get to play something two three times. Yeah, I mean, it's almost the opposite yeah. problem now. Now it's like oh sometimes I want to go back to a game and there's just so many. Yeah, there's like yeah. there's no time. There's so many games that I've. 
like enjoy it. I'm like, oh, I'll get back to you someday. I have a list of retirement games that I was like, one go. day I'll, I'll get to. Yeah. There's even like I have big adventure games. Like I love big adventure games. We were discussing yeah. this earlier. There's big adventure games I have that I'm not even like necessarily a huge fan of. But I still want to play them because there's enough in there that I'm like, oh, I'm curious what's going to happen. Yes. But I haven't played it enough to get to the point to where it's like, there. I don't like it sure. or I do like it. I know that right, there's some stuff that I'm like, it's eh, but I still want to see more. It's still enough. So it's what still. was your journey? Oh, sorry, my journey, yeah. my journey, my journey, yes. So here's, for me, I'm, I guess what you call it, cult of the new, right? Um, I started in, like, I did play Monopoly and Risk when I was really young, right? Sure. And I bought sure. HeroQuest, but when I bought HeroQuest when I was younger... I played. I basically forced my nephew to play with me. Sure, he's four years younger than me. But no, all my friends were into video games, right? Because like NES and Sega and Genesis and everything was like Glorious. blowing up, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I didn't get a chance to really play. I played it with myself, played with him for a bit, and I was like, eh, you know. Uh, for, and then uh, I stopped for a while, and then I got back into it with going to Comic Cons because I love Comic Cons. Yep. I've been going to the fan, fan Expo since year one of its existence. Yeah, and um, I walked by the table one day. And I saw Marvel Legendary and the DC deck building game right awesome. beside each other. Awesome. And I was like, what are these? And then he was trying to describe it to me. He's like, oh, they're a deck building game. And I didn't, I knew nothing. I was like, right. what's a deck building yeah, game? What's and they're like, game? do you play Magic? And I was like, yes. He's like, it's like that, but you don't have to buy the extra cards. <laughs> and I was like, like Ooh, oh, I've seen how many so... legendary sets there are. You lied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was early. Maybe it was like, there yeah, was, was only there one. Was, or two. Yeah, there was, there was nothing else at the time. Um, but I got a great deal on it. They were just like clearing the, like, I don't know why. They, got, they had a huge sale at the Fan Expo for board games. It was, was one of Was it? Oh. It was one million comics. Okay. Where I, bought it off of. I was and curious they, if it was Fun Games Cafe because no, they always had a booth at the door. At Fun no, it was one million comics. Oh, okay. They started carrying board games and they That's just fine. started didn't carry them. They, That's and I know them, so they gave me uh, like a discount. Awesome. So I was like, great. Anyways, so I started playing and you know again, buried games to the ground. And then being like a video game desire, designer during the day, um, me and Brittany we've discussed and it was like, oh maybe you should design a board game. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah. So all I started like really getting into like I do anything I research things like crazy before I get into it. Yeah. So I started listening to all like the board game design um, like podcasts and things yeah. that are out there and kind of really reviewing like how does this game work and it's like dissecting because that's how I work I like dissect yeah. things before I get into it and um, so I started doing it and one of the things I heard on one of the podcasts was if you want your game to be successful if you want it to be like a Kickstarter then you should build a foundation. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I want it to be a or not, but I was like, maybe I should start building this foundation of people that know me in the media. Yeah, yeah. So I build was like... a community. Yeah, and, but before I got to that point, Brittany was, wanted to wait, make a website. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to make a website, not about board games, just about a thing she wanted to do. But it was in conflict, what she did for her day job, so she couldn't do it. Right. So she was like, hey, well, I want to do this. I want to do a, a thing, like a webpage or something. She's like, do you want to do it? And I was like... No. And then she was like, oh, I have this idea where you can teach people how to play board games because I taught her how to play board games. Sure. And I was like, no, thanks. I don't want to be on camera. I don't like the attention. Like, I don't want to do it. You don't like the attention. Yeah, no. So she kept asking, Brittany, you're there. C confirm. That's what I said. Yeah. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> what are my Oreos? <laughs> so, anyways, so, but she kept asking me and I kept saying, no, admit it. It's no, yeah, so, I believe you. So, and, and guess who won that argument? Right. So <laughs> yeah. So one day, when I got to that point where it's like, hey, you should be, you should get a foundation of people who know you in the social circles. Sure. I was like, okay. And then she asked me one day, the same day I listened to that episode, right. hey, you want to do a channel again for like the sixth time? And I was sure. Like, okay. All right. Let's do it. Fine. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know how we're gonna get started, but let's do it. So um, we came up with it. I didn't come up with the name first. Or the first video. I think the name first. We had board game coffee. We're like, okay, we'll call it board game coffee. That's a whole story of how that became to came to be. And uh, but the first video was like she went out on a business trip, and then I got Rising Sun. Right. But I got Rising. I was like, oh, cool, Rising Sun's in. But everybody around me from the office, because I work at a video game studio, they all backed Rising Sun. Yeah. But nobody else got it. I was like, did I get like I got a copy like early? I don't know. I don't know how I got my copy early. Right. So I was like. Brittany, she was coming on the train. I was like, we're doing an unboxing home. Like, as soon right. as I get home, I was like, we got it early. Be first. Yeah, so we yeah. did it. And, like, it's, like, nine minutes long. I can't do an opening. Nine it's, minutes long? It's taking nine minutes. Unboxing nine minutes, yeah. on this channel is it's, nine minutes it's long. It's taking me more than nine minutes to answer this question. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, I, um, th that was our first video. And then we did, we took Rising Sun. And then we did, like, uh, eventually we did a How to Play. I think that was our third video was a, a How to Play. In between that, we reviewed a Dice Tower. Not right. the dice tower, a dice tower. Right. <laughs> so, the component. Yeah. And uh, so that's how I got into it. It was actually Brittany got me sure. in, into into it because I wanted to build a foundation. And I want to go back to designing the game. The thing is, we got so pulled into this. Sure. And we got our day jobs still. Yeah. 
So now it's like all mean we get to eventually see a game from you. Yes, and I, I have, a, and I, I want to do He's it. Got ideas? I do. I got ideas. I, I, I remember some of them. And uh, and I want to, I want to try it out. So I'm hoping to get back to it. And I just gotta, I just gotta find some time. And then you'll get a uh, a game from Board Game Coffee, play tested by Alex and Daryl. I'm looking forward. I'll play. This is news to me. <laughs> I'm excited. So uh, and that's it. That's how that's how I got in. That's how I got in. Well. I guess that's 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 it. That's yeah. It. Well, thank Good you. Question. Thank you guys. Yeah, great question. Thanks for sending. It. If you guys have any more questions, please send them in. I'm not gonna only. I'm not gonna always have guest stars. Sometimes all you'll get is Brittany. <laughs> that sounds like an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when we get when baby when, like <laughs> when baby Xavier shows up. Oh yeah, he'll be the star of the show. Uh, all right, that that is all. Thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Behind the Scenes. This very special episode of Behind the Scenes. And if you're not already, which I'm sure you are, if you're watching this at all, subscribe to Board Game Co. and buy this man's games, even though he hates them. I guess you have to watch his video. To yeah, there's a video. What there's that a video. Means. <laughs> <laughs> all right, see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.